Welcome back to the arena. I'm Michael Corrin and I'm back here now. But uh, just last week, there I was in Tampa, Florida. It was lovely. Between speaking engagements and I was killing some time, you know, flicking around the TV channels. Most of the hosts and guests were, were uttering nonsense about the Islamist slaughter in France evincing an ignorance of Islam that was only rivaled by their ignorance of Europe. Then, on CNN, appeared a Canadian, Zaka Nawaz, creator of the appallingly banal and humorless Little Mosque on the Prairie. She uttered a, a flow of obfuscation and nonsense, and then, as a sort of final fling, announced that we shouldn't refer to Islamic extremist terrorism because... We didn't describe Anders Berig Breivik, the murderer of dozens of young Norwegians in 2011, do you remember? As a Christian extremist terrorist. Well, that's right, love. We didn't, because he wasn't. Well, actually, I misspeak. In fact, many journalists did indeed describe him as a Christian terrorist, even after they were shown ample evidence that he wasn't. He was an active Freemason. He was extremely supportive of the gay community. And he wrote in, in his personal manifesto, Regarding my personal relationship with God, I guess I'm not an excessively religious man. I am first and foremost a man of logic. If you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and God, then you are a religious Christian. Myself and many more like me do not necessarily have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and God. End of story. Well, no, never mind. Relativism and denial are always the paths to take, aren't they? Now, the CNN host, of course, said not a word in response. Now, maybe it was the satellite feed's time delay, perhaps it was simply ignorance, or perhaps a fear of arguing with a woman in a hijab. Oh, darling, consider the optics of that. The thing is, only an idiot or a bigot would assume that Islamist terrorists speak for the mass of Muslims and represent all of Islam. What we can say is that they speak for a significant minority of Muslims and do indeed represent an extremist, and I hope, skewered and perverse interpretation of Islam. But to assume and proclaim that there is no possible connection and link is, well, it's cowardly and it's naive. But we shouldn't single out uh, Nawaz. She's probably devastated by what is taking place in the name of her religion and genuinely repulsed by such violence, I'm sure of it. Worse, in some ways, was one of those retired colonels wheeled out on US television, I think so many of them, who, who, who told us on the same network that, quote, we didn't describe the IRA as Catholic, so why describe these people as Muslim? OK, baby, let's have a go. It could be that we didn't describe the IRA as Catholic because they're not. Half a century ago, maybe. But the modern IRA and its political front is it's virtually Marxist, and it rejected the church long ago. Sinn Féin leader Jerry Adams, OK? He said to me personally, sitting with me, this has nothing to do with the Pope or Catholicism. But what would Sinn Féin leader Jerry Adams know about all this? Look, to defeat one's enemy, one must know who and what it is. We fight not against Islam, but against an ideology and theology that is a product of a specific strain of Muslim history, experience, ambition and hatred. Most of the victims have been other Muslims, and I'm pretty sure they know exactly who is doing the killing. 